Vyacheslav Maltsev, the middle of three children in the family, was very promising. He always studied for excellent, helped around the house, practiced volleyball, basketball, and chess. He was the pride of his family and school. Slava joined the army in Chechnya, went through Grozny and Gudermes, served as a sapper. In the late 1990s, Vyacheslav moved to Barnul for work and soon met Margarita Arkhipova. They married quickly, and when their daughter Alyona was born, their happiness increased a hundredfold. Margarita was a well-known doctor in Barnal. In September 2004, when Alyona was four years old, she went on a call to the village of Beresovka, did not return the accident in Stantith. Slava held on, there were no other options, the child in his arms. For some time he lived with his daughter and his wife's grandmother in Barnaul. Then he returned to Cheremnoi, where he was born. Now Elena is 23 years old, studying in Tomsk at the law school. She was going to come to visit her daddy in July 2021, but she will never see her daddy again. As I said, Vyacheslav Maltsev is the pride of his family and school. Somehow, a few fours slipped through on his certificate. No one doubted. Slavka, so his sister calls him all the time, will go anywhere. Elena's sister Slava, on the verge of crying, recalls, This is a family legend. Only mom knew it. Slavka did not enter the institute because he helped the girl and did not have time to do his assignments. She got in. Slavka went to the army. Almost immediately after his enlistment, he found himself in the war zone in Chechnya. I had him through Grozny and Gudermes. He served as a sapper. In December 1995, he received a bullet wound in his arm. He spent a month in hospital, then returned to the front, says Lemyakina. Elena and Vyacheslav are 10 years apart. When he went off to war, she was eight. The woman continues, I remember I was 10 years old, sitting on the porch with a book. I saw a motorcycle coming with a crowd of people. I didn't recognize Slavka at first. He was a skinny young man, a boy, a handsome man came back. I threw myself on his neck, then ran home. Mom, Slava's back. After the war, Maltsev did not have post-traumatic stress disorder or any problems with socialization, as his sister clarifies. He adapted to peaceful life quickly he worked at a sugar factory in the village of Cheremnoye, Pavlovsky district. My mother also worked there. However, he did not stay there for long, deciding to move to Barnaul, where he met the previously mentioned Margarita Arkhipova. After her death, he returned to his homeland, while his daughter remained in Barnaul. He was always the soul of the company. He was a fun-loving guy. We didn't notice any inclination to drink alcohol either. At most, he would have a drink on holidays and not much of it. In 2017, Vyacheslav got together with Galina Tenyaeva, a resident of the village of Cheremnoi. The choice of Maltsev's relatives did not please them. However, Vyacheslav's loved ones in his personal life did not interfere. It was not me who brought you together. It is not for me to divorce you thought his mother, Tamara Yurievna. I always told Slavka, you were and still are a brother to me, recalls Lemyakina. But know this, with Galina, we will not become girlfriends. The relationship between Galina and Vyacheslav Elena calls no other than Stormy. He repeatedly went to his mother's house for a while, but eventually returned to his common-law wife. My sister and mother were worried and advised me, Slavka, you should leave her and he was sincerely surprised. Why do you dislike her so much? Such a wonderful woman. Maltsev and Tenyava lived in her house, the same place in Cheremnoye. From time to time, Galina was visited by her mother, Lyudmila Alexandrovna Martinova, hearing after the names have been changed, editor's note. At the time of Vyacheslav's death, she was 76 years old. According to Lemyakina, Lyudmila Alexandrovna did not miss an opportunity to scandalize. She started with complaints about her daughter and continued with her dissatisfaction with her common-law husband. After Chechnya, Slava was generally against any kind of conflict. He never got into any fights, never wanted to quarrel, Elena says quietly. 
The same was true of relations with his mother-in-law. Galina admonished, Slava, you stay out of it. She'll yell and leave. I'll take care of it myself. The man did not interfere. July 1st, 2021. Martinova once again decided to visit her daughter. Vyacheslav was at home. This time the cause for conflict was an alcohol bottle, which Lyudmila Alexandrovna saw in the trash can in the kitchen. She became indignant. Moreover, addressed to Maltsev. Explanations of Galina Tenyaeva from the materials of the criminal case. Martinova stayed at my place for about an hour without stopping to express words of her displeasure against Maltsev. He did not say anything to her in response, did not approach her, did not touch her, did not utter any threats, did not show any gestures. After leaving Galina's house, Lyudmila Alexandrovna called her son Konstantin and youngest daughter Olga. She said that she had been offended by Maltsev at Tenyaeva's house. He shouted, threw and even kicked her. The next day, July 2nd, around 9 p.m., the couple was again visited by uninvited guests. They are the future defendants in the criminal case. Konstantin Barishnikov is Galina Tenyaeva's half-brother, 42 years old, not married, not working. Olga Tokareva is Galina Tenyaeva's half-sister, 41 years old, single, unemployed, has two minor children. Yegor Udaltsov is Olga Tokareva's son, 17 years old. They arrived, according to Tenyaeva, already drunk. Udaltsov even tripped on the threshold when entering the veranda. They had a bottle of alcohol with them. At that time, Vyacheslav was lying on the sofa watching TV. When he heard that guests had come, he moved to an armchair and began to get dressed. He didn't get out of the chair again. It follows from the materials of the criminal case, available to the editorial office, editor's note, that Yegor Udaltsov entered the room first and began to wrap black boxing tapes around his hands. Tokareva commanded, Come on, son, do it nicely. Barishnikov seconded, You first, then me. From the materials of the criminal case, Udaltsov delivered a blow to the area of Maltsev's head with his hands, Barishnikov delivered at least five blows to the same area. Also a blow with his feet and a wooden bat to the area of Maltsev's head. It goes on to describe a multiple blows to the arms, legs, and torso. Udaltsov and Barishnikov took turns hitting. All this time Tenyeva tried to get into the hall and stop the attackers. However, she was held back, including Olga Tokareva, Udaltsov's mother, she was later recognized as a witness. Tenyeva heard noises, hissing, popping, sounds of blows. She did not actively resist, fearing for her life. Why did you lift your leg on my mother? She is already 80 years old. You should apologize to her, Barishnikov yelled to Maltsev before taking another swing. The man was unable to respond. After the first blow to the temple, the man could no longer speak or resist. Several times, Tenyeva managed to get into the room. She begged Barishnikov and Udaltsov, Stop beating him. How many times can you do it? He is not guilty of anything. Galina saw that Maltsev was covered in blood. His face was swollen. His nose and lips were broken. His eyes were swollen so that his eyelashes were barely visible. There was blood on the furniture and walls. A wooden bat, which appears in the case materials, was the main weapon. However, no one saw it at the time of the beating. The first time Galina Tenyaeva noticed the bat was when the three just entered the house. The second time, when it was lying on the sink and was covered in blood. Yegor Udaltsov washed his hands in the sink and rinsed the black ribbons he had previously wrapped around his fists. After that, he asked the lady of the house for a bag to put them away. After the deed was done, all three went back onto the porch and asked Tenyeva, make us some coffee. She hoped that if she obeyed, they would not kill Maltsev. As they left, the guests punished Galina. Don't you dare call the police or tell anyone. When we come back, we will kill you. Maltsev's torture lasted more than two hours. When Galina entered the hall, she saw that Maltsev was lying on the sofa covered with a blanket. 
Having thrown off the blanket, she saw that his face and head were smashed even more severely than before. There were abundant clots of blood and other biological substances on the bedclothes and the sofa. There were also more blood spatters on the walls and the sofa, the criminal case file says. Tokareva, Barishnikov, and Udaltsov left by cab. The driver was waiting for them the whole time. Tenyaeva called an ambulance. It arrived around midnight. The doctors declared Vyacheslav Maltsev dead. In three months, he was to be 45 years old. The man was buried in a closed coffin. From the testimony of the cab driver available in the case file, there were three of them, a boy of about 16 years old, an adult man, and a woman. The boy, turning to the woman, I realized that it was his mother, said, did you see how I smashed his head with a bat? Such a dialogue took place on the way to Sarai, a small village, not far from Cheremny. There, they broke into the house of their acquaintance, beat up her cohabitant, and left by the same cab to Barnaul. 35-year-old Elena Lemyakina learned about the death of her older brother on July 3rd, around 6.30. It was a call from her mother. Tamara Yurievna screamed hysterically, Lena! Slavka was killed! Elena spent the next few hours on the phone. She called the authorities, calmed her mother. She tried to find out the truth. Until the last, there was hope. Maybe he was just beaten up. Barishnikov, Udaltsova, and Tokareva were detained almost immediately. There were no other suspects. Galina Tenyaeva told the police officers how everything happened. Later, she officially became the main witness. According to the case materials, immediately after the detention, the suspects gave confessions. However, later, with the support of lawyers, they began to refer to Article 51 of the Constitution of the Russian Federation. Even later, it was alleged that Maltsev was the first to throw his fists at Barishnikov and the minor Udaltsov. And their mother and grandmother, Lyudmila Alexandrovna Martinova, had been maimed the day Elena before. recounts, they tried to make it look as if Slava led an immoral lifestyle and was generally aggressive. They tried to make it look as if Slava led an immoral life and was aggressive in general. To confirm this, on July 5th, the day of Vyacheslav's funeral, Lyudmila Alexandrovna went to the local district doctor for a certificate of beatings. The doctor found several fresh bruises and abrasions, as if they had appeared yesterday. Recall. In the house to the daughter, Martinova came in the evening of July 1st. It was then, according to her version, Maltsev raised his hand on her. She did not write a statement to the police. The therapist about the allegedly criminal origin of injuries did not tell. In January, I had to file a complaint with the prosecutor's office and the Cry Investigative Committee about the actions of Pavlovsky District investigators. Before that, the case did not move says Elena Lemyakina. Barishnikov, Udaltsov, and Tokareva stubbornly did not admit guilt. Moreover, their versions of what happened changed dramatically from time to time. During the first interrogation, Konstantin Barishnikov claimed that no one had inflicted bodily harm on him on July the 2nd. But at the same time, he himself beat a man he knew. Later, Barishnikov said that Maltsev gave him at least two blows and knocked out a tooth. And 17-year-old Udaltsov did not touch Vyacheslav at all. Later, another version emerged. The black ribbons allegedly belonged to Vyacheslav himself. Although he has never practiced martial arts, his sister clarifies. In addition, 20 years ago at work, he was injured and lost the fingers on one hand. I understand perfectly well that attempts to convince the court of allegedly immoral behavior and illegal actions of my brother, a defensive position to mitigate or avoid criminal responsibility, explains Lemayakina. To achieve the proper punishment, you must first prove that he was a decent and calm person. Elena dealt with her brother's case on her own, without lawyers. She also managed to get her recognized as the second victim after her mother. Elena recounts, My husband and I went to Cheremnoye and interviewed more than 20 people there to make a characterization. All these people confirmed that Slavic was mild 
and non-conflictive. His friends and classmates also spoke about him. The village council refused to certify the characterization, citing a lack of authority. Then Elena took characteristics in several organizations where Maltsev worked. Everywhere Vyacheslav was described positively. The trials began in June 2022 and concluded at the end of November. There were more than 20 sessions in total. Some were attended by friends of Maltsev, talking about the kind of person he was. The mother and sister of the deceased Vyacheslav Maltsev attended every hearing. Tamara Yurievna bore the trials particularly hard. At each hearing, she took with her the Order of Courage, which her son received as a reward for heroism in Chechnya. During one of the sessions, the mother of the deceased said, I never imagined that I would have to bury my child in peacetime and to learn what it is like to have a loved one die at the hands of strangers. In November 2022, the court found Konstantin Barishnikov and Yegor Udaltsov guilty under two articles, intentional infliction of serious harm to health, dangerous to human life, committed with the use of objects used as weapons by a group of persons by prior conspiracy, causing the death of the victim by negligence, and illegal entry into a dwelling, committed against the will of a person living in it. Olga Tokareva was found guilty of the latter. Barishnikov was sentenced to nine years imprisonment in a strict regime colony. Udaltsov, seven years and one month in a general regime colony, since he was a minor at the time of the incident. Tokareva, 11 months of correctional labor. The verdict will be appealed in the regional court. I still don't understand why they were not charged with 105 of the criminal code of the Russian Federation murder. They will sit and get out, and nobody will give Slavka back to me. Yelena almost cries. She believes that the punishment is too mild and plans to seek its toughening. Whether Vecheslav's relatives appealed the verdict is not known. I did not find anything else on this case. Support the video by liking and the channel by subscribing. And all the best to you. Be careful.